Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave with special guest Joel Telling from 3D Printing Nerd. How are you, sir? What's up, Adam? You have brought a impossible object to show and I'm really psyched about this. Tell me what the hell this monstrosity is. So uh, my producer David was working with Paramount for Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Okay. And in that movie, you get to meet Optimus Primal, one of the Maximals, and this is his head printed in Inconel 718. In Inconel 718, okay. So that is a super high strength steel alloy. Nickel. Nickel. Yes. And it must weigh a freaking ton. It does, it's not solid, so it's not unbearably heavy, but yeah. it's about, the head's about 175 pounds and the stand's right around 60 pounds. So together a little more than a Dave Bautista. <laughs> exactly, that's what we use for measurement. <laughs> what, so, and this is, this, that's oh, it makes beautiful. a good noise, doesn't it? This yeah. is 3D yeah. printed? This is 100% 3D printed, absolutely. Describe to me the process. Is it a welder on, a, on an XY? Are you thinking like one of those yeah, sort of things? Yeah. No, no, this is using a powder bed. So, oh, it's sintered center then. Yes, yes, okay. it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a powder bed of metal material and the temperature in, within the chamber is kept subcritical and that laser goes through and brings the material that it hits just above critical so we can weld it together. And this is, I didn't know, I've had metal stuff 3D printed. <laughs> sure. And I know these machines are huge, but I didn't know they could print stuff this big. Crazy, right? So the machine that printed this, it's from Velo 3D, it's their Sapphire XC, and it's like two stories tall. And part, part of that, so now the build plate is 600 millimeters in diameter, and it'll go about 550 millimeters tall. So it's so almost two foot cube. It's, it's very large. <laughs> Part of the size of the machine that printed this has to do with the metal powder and bringing it in and taking it out and recovering it. And I'm assuming they're able to recover the powder they don't use for one print for another print. Yes, they, they can do that. You yeah, still, yeah. There still needs to be, I believe, a little bit of virgin material, but for the most part, if you didn't use it in this print, you could print another head and be just fine and good to go. So. <laughs> I know, I know, right? There's so many questions. How, how thick is the actual printed shell of this? Is oh, it like an inch thick? That's a really good question. So, you know, kind of like that. So you, you see the geometry on the outside yeah. and it's not translated to the inside. So right. the inside is a smooth, semi-oblong circle, okay. essentially, okay. sphere. And so, it, yeah, right. How long did this take to print? <laughs> I mean- Any guesses? I'm feeling like on the order of like over a hundred hours for yes. something like this. Five and a half days. Five and a half days. Five and a half days. That's just over, yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, right? there you go. Fair enough. So it's a little, it's just under 9,000 layers of material and five and a half days is what it took to print. 9,000 layers. So what is that resolution? On uh, it is, it is 0 0.05 millimeters. Wow. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. What? Who uses this? I can't even turn. I was going to turn it. No, you can't. You I mean, can't you even can. turn you it. You really have to. Oh, there, there we go. go. Yeah, I can move the leather. Yeah, it's going to move the leather before um, before the print. Who uses printers like this and for what? So if you think about the material that is being used here, Inconel, Inconel 718, yeah. it's, it's hard. It can withstand lots of temperature, lots of pressure. Think space exploration. So rocket right. engines. There we go. Nozzles, things that need high heat. And, and high pressure, and that's kind of what this material is, is really used for. So like Velo 3D would work with like SpaceX, and right, people right, that send right. things high into the air. To make high strength, high, high, uh, uh, high abuse rocket parts. Yes, exactly. And the reason that 3D printing is essential for things like that is because you can create geometries that you cannot create in any other manufacturing method, which then simplifies things. Yep. Because when you talk about going to space, you want reusable, you want simple to repair. Yep. And a lot of times rocket motors will have hundreds, thousands of parts. And so if you can simplify that geometry, then use a manufacturing method that can actually make that geometry, you come up with something that costs less, is easier to repair, it's 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 easier to install and it's just it's just gets humans to space faster. I, I did a job for GE years ago where I visited one of their uh, jet engine factories and oh. they were using 3D printers to do titanium veins in a jet engine. And they were able to print it with a, a, a venting matrix inside 
Mm -hmm. that allowed them to operate these veins at a temperature above their melting point. <laughs> That's right. Because they're able to air condition them yeah, from the absolutely. inside. Those are the geometries you're talking about that 3D printing can do that no other process can achieve. Right, and not only can they do that, they can do it in a single part. Because a lot of times right. if you're going to adapt cooling to something, it's gonna be pieces that are attached together. Just increase complexity, yeah. increase chance for failure. Yeah. Okay, the, the, the big question, okay, uh, wait, one more. Is the base made of the same stuff or is this different? The base is made of the same stuff. So this is all Inconel 718, all, all wonderful metal material. So this though, because you kind of see this, this is the Maximals yeah. logo. So did you hit this then with a with a, with a a ever finer grits to get it shiny like that? I did, I <laughs> did. Yes, so there are polishing companies that can take Inconel 17 and bead blast and polish. So what you see here, could actually be applied to, to the entire, entire geometry of the surface. Yeah. And is this um is this accurately sized to the hero in the film of the size he would be? As close as we can. As get. close as you Transformers, can. Transformers, as you know, are quite large. They are large, and they may be spongy with their scales. I imagine it could be, uh, but but in the realm of things that can be created, this is as close as you're going to get to an accurate representation of what a transformer is made out of at scale. Um, now you have been traveling around and abusing this. Yes, that's 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 where you've just come from. Tell me, has have you been? It doesn't look like it's achieved any real uh, abuse. I don't see At any all. marks on it. No. So we just visited the Hacksmith mm -hmm. up in Toronto. Yeah. And this was there just a few days ago. And uh, James at the Hacksmith had a a toy box we got to dive into. And so we hit it with concrete bricks yeah. just right over the top of the head. You yeah. can see there's yeah. no damage. No. We used a a four thousand degree plasma saber sure, to hit I'm it familiar on with that the saber. face, <laughs> and as you can see right here, where is it? Oh, right there. There's a there's oh, a you slight, have a little discoloration, just a there. little bit of discoloration. So oh, yeah. it's a nickel chromium alloy, and chromium can discolor at high heat, and so that's what that is. And what's great is if you take it to the same company that polishes this, they'll bead blast it, polish it, and it's good and it's to all go. fine. And then, uh, and then we hit it with a bunch of fire, like a lot of, like a lot of fire. And the ink canal does not discolor for the most part. No, under that, no. except over here. Well, the, the fire itself doesn't get as hot as the plasma oh, yeah, saber. Sure, of course. And, yeah, but, so had we had fire 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, it might look you a little different. You could the whole thing kind of. Which I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of want that now. All right. So uh, my two big questions are, how much did this cost to print? I don't have accurate numbers. Do you and have a ballpark? $10,000, $100,000. I, okay, so <laughs> I think accurately, I can say $100,000. Because we're talking about the material right. and the time on the machine and the people operating the right. machine. These machines are constantly printing high value parts for high value clients working at the apex of the technology. They need it cycling. So to do something like this, if they take it offline, that has a cost. Absolutely. Um, and then where, <laughs> where is this gonna live when you are done traveling and abusing it? So there's a really good chance that this might appear when the red carpet for oh. the Transformers Rise of the Beasts is held. Nice. But after that, obviously, that's a that's yeah, a one-day yeah. event. But after that, this is going to be seen at events that happen around the globe. This is going to be seen at these additive events that Velo 3D, who printed this, goes to, because this is a great showcase yeah, of the technology. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, maybe it lives in a museum or yeah. you know, the uh I suggest that you charge people like five bucks and they can just like they can hit it and hear the good, uh, the beautiful ring. It's a great ring. It's, I'm denting my hammer. I was just gonna say you're yeah. gonna damage your hammer way before you damage this I've thing. Got the, I've got the, the case hardened convincer here. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, I apologize. I should have said we should wear, we should wear uh, hearing protection. That was satisfying though. That was a very, very satisfying ring. Joel, I, obviously, we're sitting in my palace of yeah, objects absolutely. and the stories they tell, but thank you for bringing this really weird and wonderful piece here. It's astounding. It was, uh, it was an effort of many <laughs> to make this happen, and it coalesced right here, and I'm just really glad we were able to do this. Oh, so thanks for bringing it by, man. man. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you letting us come by.